Houston Dynamo, Portland Timbers, Sporting Kansas, Los Angeles Galaxy, Beach Pass, Toronto FC, Salt Lake, Chicago Fire, Columbus Crew, FC Dallas, New York Red Bulls, Pitch Pass, your all-access credential to the people that matter in MLS. Here's your host, Greg Roach. Did somebody say bonus show? Oh, yeah. That's how big Pitch Pass is getting. We're churning out more than one episode a week. Uh, This is a bonus episode. Thank you very much for downloading it. We're going to go a little bit different on this Pitch Pass. We're going to go to the second division of American soccer, NASL. There is a team that is about to launch. Well, launch about a year from now. They are called the Virginia Cavalry. A lot of people talking about it in the uh, D.C. area. And as somebody who doesn't really know a lot about the divisions underneath MLS, I really wanted to get a little more information. So we bring in the Director of Soccer Operations for Virginia Cavalry, also former D.C. United goalkeeper, also longtime D.C. United goalkeeper coach, Mark Simpson joins us here on Pitch Pass. Mark, how are you, my friend? Uh, Doing well. Thanks for having me. Of course. uh, I got... I'm very interested in Virginia Cavalry, and not just from the from the team standpoint, but also just because I would like to broaden my knowledge of the, the divisions below MLS. So this is a perfect opportunity to kind of educate myself and maybe some people who follow MLS and don't know as much about NASL. So I, I guess let's let's start from the beginning. What was the impetus for bringing this team into existence? Well, I was approached approximately about 20 months ago, a guy who runs the baseball side of things for the Loudoun Hounds. Uh, they'll play in the Atlantic League Independent, uh, AAA. And so I've, I've known Adam Gladstone for about six years, and he approached me. Um, they're building a stadium in one Loudoun and approached me if I was interested in running a, a North American Soccer League franchise. So... You know, after being in the weeds for a couple of years and uh, getting out of the game from D.C. United, I jumped at the chance, uh, you know, a chance to start something from scratch. And, um, you know, as as you you may know, North American Soccer League has Division II status, so uh, one right underneath Major League Soccer. Uh, The league is growing. Um, It's gone through some growing pain, but it's growing. And by the year 2014, while we enter – you know you're gonna you're gonna have 12 teams in the league. So it, it's uh, you know with the New York Cosmos coming in and Ottawa, Indy, um, and ourselves, uh, you know the league is starting to grow and and the quality of play, quality of play is getting better as well. I like what they've done, and, and you mentioned that there there was some growing pains or some bumps in the roads, but it seems as if uh, I I don't know if it's maybe two three years ago they did a full reset and they you, they kind of weeded out the franchises that were a bit of a drag, and they, even though they're they're kind of streamlined now, like you said, the expansion and by 2014 to have 12 teams, uh, they've kind of got their ducks in a row finally, is what I'm I'm leading up to. Yeah, and it's and it's a rebranding, really. You know, you remember the old North American Soccer League back in the '70s and '80s, and not to date myself, but that's kind of what I grew up uh, growing up in Chicago with the Chicago Sting, and you know, the biggest rivals were the you know the Dips and the Cosmos and the Strikers and and, and the Rowdies, and you bring those teams back, and so we're just obviously glad to be a part of this and and the restructuring and the rebranding and. You know, it's cool for me because I grew up, you know, in the in the early '80s, mid '80s, following the Sting. So it's neat for me to be a part of of this, and especially a team that you can build from the ground up. We were talking on the last episode of Pitch Pass to Clint Irwin of Colorado Rapids, and and kind of his trials, literally his trials on trying to latch on with the team before he ended up uh, making the splash with Colorado. And one of the things he said is the reason why he fell through the cracks is because there's literally 40 goalkeeping jobs in the country, and that's all divisions of professional soccer. So once those are taken, there's really no other way for you to to shine a light on on your talents. And adding teams like Virginia Cavalry and, and Ottawa and Indy, this is only going to be a good thing for the for the for the sport in this country because it's now more jobs and more opportunities for people for for guys coming out of college to to get some professional experience. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and and the biggest thing too for someone that especially on the goalkeeping side of things when they're not yet seasoned, you know, goalkeepers uh, come into their prime a lot later than a field player, and there are those opportunities in which to keep moving up the staircase. So. You know, if one guy's kind of sitting on the bench in MLS and not getting games, he can go get moved down as a lone player to get games, to get seasoning, 
and therefore when he's called upon kind of step back up into you know mls and and just play at the highest level no matter what it might be you know um we will have a, a player development side to us uh with the academy but we're always looking to you know be competitive but yet still move players up through the system and try to get them playing at the highest level yeah and that was going to be my next question you mentioned uh a developmental program uh, how are you how are you stocking the team and and obviously you don't start until a year from now so what's the process to go from now to make sure that we've got a full roster of guys that we are are confident in moving forward in a year a lot of it's uh, the relationships that I've created. Even when I was coaching at DC United, you're you're, you're going to have all your agents that you are familiar with, and you, you have to know contract status of what guys are going to be free agents and available to play. You're going to go scout MLS games and MLS reserves, and all the way down from you know PDL, USL, uh, North American Soccer League, and then you'll you'll go and you'll scout your college games in the fall, but. You know, it, it's a job. It's it's not like there's ex, um, an expansion draft where you get to start with 12 players. You're, you're starting from scratch, and and you got to fill those gaps. And uh, so there's a lot of homework up front, and hopefully it all pans out. And you you do your work, and and you get a staff where you're all working together. And you know, you got eyes all over the place trying to you know build a team from from square one. You talked about the developmental program, and uh, it's you know we were talking about about jobs for goalkeepers throughout the country for in, in a professional ranks. What is what's the plan to to put together? What do you envision as being the Virginia Cavalry youth setup, for lack of a better word? Well, the academy, you know, we're we're looking to. Uh, I've already had relationships now we've we've started to put together these community club i call it kind of an alliance model um since we are not a club that's been withstanding for the last two years you have to go out and 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 create and develop your relationships kind of what dc united's done with free state and annandale um you go and you know utilize their training facilities their players uh, their coaches, and you get those guys to um, kind of coordinate uh, what you want to do from an academy standpoint. So you support it. Uh, you go out and you'll have your first team really connect with, with all your academy coaches. Um, you help them develop players for the first team. So we really, really want to draw from the Northern Virginia, Maryland, D.C. area to to keep developing players. Um we will compete with DC United. That's that's not a secret. Um, but I think if you're if you have the frame of mind where you're doing it, what's best for the player and developing them and trying to get, to get them to the next level, um, I think everyone can be successful. Is is there a is there a ra- a reason or a rational thought process to think to yourself that there we could have or or Calvary could have uh, a mentality, a club mentality, or is th- is that not possible at, in the second division? No, I, I definitely think it's possible. Um, you know, if everybody buys into what you're doing and, and we want to not just create um, and develop soccer players, we want to develop people um, both on and off the field. And I think that's important. You know, not everybody that comes up through our academy system is going to play professional soccer. But can you now provide an atmosphere where they're getting viewed by U.S. soccer scouts, college division one scouts, where they can go on uh, get their way paid through college uh, and maybe have a career, even if it's not in soccer. So th- that's kind of what we want to focus on is is being able to just develop people outside the game, but use the game as a tool to, in which to do that. Obviously, you're in the backyard of D.C. United um, for people who are listening nationally, uh, Loudoun County. What, what would you say? 45 minutes, an hour, if you go with traffic, maybe two hours. <laughs> in the morning, it took me an hour and a half to get downtown. I still live in the same house. So, yeah, our new stadium uh, right in smack dab in Loudoun County, uh, as you saw the Forbes list, it's, uh, you know, the richest county in, in the United States. And, uh, you know, it, it's really it, it's far out enough where it's kind of starving for its own entertainment. Yeah. So, you know, I, just in when talking with neighbors and the people that I've seen uh, in the county themselves, you know, it's going to be a nice little niche. And, and really, the, the, 
the community at one Loudon is is going to create that entertainment package as well. Not just the stadium, the standalone stadium. There's plenty to do. So you could go to one Loudon, kind of hang out. You can catch a movie at the Cinema Draft House. Uh, you, there's numerous restaurants and shops and, and retail. And, um, you know, if you choose to catch a soccer game or a baseball game, that's, that's an added bonus. So there's going to be, you know, it's a multi-use facility. It is structured for baseball, uh, but they do have um, a lot of uh, soccer-specific things that they've added. And, uh, you know, I've been on plenty of stadium planning meetings to to make sure that both sports – are viable and that you you know you'll get the most out of each each game it doesn't end from an aesthetic standpoint you guys have made zero missteps so far the name people have really embraced uh i know people who aren't even in virginia who who love the name uh the logo uh is really really cool and eye-catching the motto which is uh, <laughs> never ride alone. Uh, it's it all kind of ties in together and it's really it's one that that people are getting excited about well, I, I thank you. We've spent quite a lot of time. There's there's quite a few individuals that have weighed in on it. We put a lot of thought into it. You know, we wanted to steep rich in history. We wanted to have that logo and the name for to have meaning. Uh, we wanted to symbolize what a team meant, a group of, you know, collection of individuals working towards a common goal. Um, and so, you know, there was a lot of, you know, over a process of time and we got the public involved, we, you know, had the names and once, once they picked the name, we literally, um, you know, went with it. And so that's, what's been neat. It's been a whole process where the community got involved as well. And, um, you know, I I love the shield. It it represents the classic soccer design going back in, in history with South America and Europe and, uh, so it's neat. There's different things that you can play off of. The Never Ride Alone uh, motto as well just, you know, stigmatize a team where uh, nobody's, you know, on their own doing it by themselves. It's it's always a collection of in- individuals. And that's not just on the field, but that's through the front office and, and everybody involved. And uh, we, we really want to kind of preach that to everybody. So you get that teamwork uh you know, mindset and uh, everybody's, you know, working towards a common goal. You still getting out to golf at all? <laughs> I I would like to play a lot more than I do, but, uh, you know, being in the weeds and getting into the real world, uh, you know, I'm still <laughs> kind of doing both jobs right now in the mortgage business. So uh, it's been, it's been great because it's, um, you know, keeps my passion alive with soccer. Uh, like I said, I've been on this about 20 months. Uh, we're starting to ramp up now here in the last six, eight months. And, uh, you know, in a year's time, we're going to be, we're going to be playing. So, um, I couldn't be more excited and just humbled and, and grateful for this opportunity and just looking to see where it can all go. I bring it up because, uh, in the DC United charity golf tournament every year, you'd always love to see who won. And it was always the Mark Simpson foursome. So, and then we're always like, yeah, Simpson's the golfer of the entire uh, organization. <laughs> Kevin Payne did his best to stack his team, so I was just trying to compete against that. <laughs> well, Mark, best of luck to you guys. I know it's, it's it's still a year off, but yes, as you said, you know it's 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 a busy time for you guys. But we we can't wait to uh, to see them on the on the pitch and and have the NASL really develop as as a as a proper second division organization. So, best of luck with Virginia Cavalry, my friend. Thanks, Roach. Thanks for having me. For more show information, go to pitchpass.com.